I was scared to death. Sometimes I still get emotional about it because I, I don't, you know, had no idea. Most times I could tell, I did know what they wanted me to say, but I couldn't. My name, I did not know. Well, I thought, you know, they would be not be able to speak and maybe they would be paralyzed on one side or the other. And, uh, you know, that was something that happened to somebody else. It wouldn't happen to me. At any time, it could happen to any one of us. Stroke, it is the third leading cause of death and the leading cause of serious long-term disability. It strikes the young and the old, men and women, all races. Tonight, we'll equip you with life-saving information you need to know. What are the symptoms of a stroke? And how should you respond if someone near you shows the signs of a stroke? We'll introduce you to a dedicated team of medical professionals that stand guard 24-7, prepared to fight the potentially devastating effects of a stroke. Because in the end, it's a race against time to get help and undo the damage that the brain has suffered. I'm Steve Smith. Welcome to Leading Medicine. Many of us are well informed when it comes to heart disease, but what about stroke? Would you recognize the symptoms? I noticed at the end of choir practice that my left hand was playing some strange notes. Dr. David Chu is the director of the Eddie Skurlock Stroke Center at the Methodist Neurological Institute. He says the indications may not be as clear. With a stroke, unfortunately, there are many different symptoms that can constitute a stroke. The classic ones being weakness or numbness on one side of the body that occurs abruptly, sudden loss of speech or loss of vision on one side. She just stopped talking. I called my mother in East Texas and I was speaking with her on the phone and as I was talking with her, you know, I just felt tired. It was a very choking experience. We want uh, people to know that that requires uh, immediate uh, treatment or at least diagnosis. So if you suspect that you're having a stroke, uh, then by all means, the right way to act is to call 911. Jan Flewelling is a stroke educator with the Methodist Hospital. She explains that where you go for medical treatment is key because time is brain. Not every hospital has an emergency room that's set up to respond immediately to the stroke needs. The TPA, which is the medication that will break down the clot and open up the obstruction in the artery, is not available in every hospital. So if you have just a small community hospital that isn't prepared with TPA, then bringing a stroke patient there is not going to do them any good. So we need a hospital that's ready with the technology right at the moment that you hit the doors. And you also need people in the emergency room that recognize what stroke symptoms are, know that you don't have someone sit in the chairs and wait for their turn for the next two and a half, three hours when you lose your opportunity for treatment. You need to treat right away. These folks legitimately need to jump the line and you need an emergency room staff that knows that. And then you need to have a neurological team available. Not every small community hospital is going to be ready with that whole picture right when someone comes in the door. So even though they're a closer hospital from the home, they aren't going to be the hospital that can give you the best care. We just had a young patient. It was somebody who was in their 40s who had symptoms of right arm weakness. This was a community hospital in rural um, greater Houston area. And they sent her home. That was a pinched nerve, gave her some um, muscle relaxants. Her stroke evolved and she came back the next day and fortunately they did ship her here to the stroke center. So that's time wasted. Time wasted is brain lost. There are many misconceptions about who is at risk for stroke. It may surprise you to learn that we are all at risk, especially if we have certain other medical conditions. 
Uncontrolled high blood pressure is the number one by far and has been all along. We call it the silent killer for a good reason. Number two is, is probably cholesterol and that's absolutely important to, to know what your cholesterol numbers are. If you're diabetic, you need to keep your diabetes under control. The last one I would say is definitely don't smoke. Smoking is a huge, huge risk factor because it causes damage to the arteries and makes you much more prone to having those blood clots form that plug up the circulation and cause the stroke. So how do you know if someone near you is having a stroke? What we are teaching, and we are aggressively teaching this, is what we call the FAST assessment. FAST, an acronym for Face, Arms, Speech, and Time, and where we can teach lay people to assess when a face is becoming uneven because of weakness, arms are not uh, able to hold up because of weakness, speech changing, whether it's slurred or the content of the language changing, and noting the time so that we can call 911 and get that person to the emergency room immediately. And that's what people in the community can do. It's kind of the stroke CPR. When we come back, we'll hear more about the Eddie Skurlock Stroke Center from some Houstonians with first-hand knowledge. Seems like I have it emerged from that dark place that stroke can put you in. If you would like more information about stroke or would like to register for a free healthy knowledge seminar, visit MethodistHealth.com or call the Methodist Hospital, 713-790-3333. Operators are standing by. We hope you'll join us again for the next edition of Leading Medicine.